Hey, everybody. It's Movie Recap Nation with you. Today, we're going to break down the plot of the 2018 action thriller. Passenger 60-year-old Michael McCauley, a former policeman, lives in a happy marriage with his wife and son Danny, and has been an insurance agent for 10 years. Every weekday, his wife drops Michael off at the train station, and he takes the same train to work in New York City from his home to Grand Central Station. One day, the boss calls Michael to his office and abruptly fires the man. Numerous arguments from the agent. Two mortgages. The need to pay an impressive sum for his son's college. And five more years until retirement. Doesn't help. Talking to his spouse on the phone, Michael doesn't know how to admit to his loved ones that he's bankrupt. The man goes to a bar where he meets former partner Lieutenant Alex Murphy and gets an offer of help. But Michael replies that he can handle it on his own. While the two are chatting on TV, a report is shown and employees from the Department of City Planning who for some unknown reason jumped out of a window in the bar. It also turns out to be Michael's former boss David Holt, who was recently promoted to the rank of captain. In parting, Alex tells Michael that we're all doing the right thing, but it doesn't change anything. And there is no nobility in the world. Upon boarding the evening train, a stranger confronts Michael. It is only in the train car that the man discovers his cell phone is missing. A distraught Michael meets some familiar regular passengers. At the same time, Walt draws his attention to a mysterious woman who is watching Michael. However, the agent doesn't notice anyone. Some girl asks the Wall Street broker to speak quietly on the phone. He mocks her cheap perfume, which causes her companion to move farther away. Later, having found a free seat to Michael, the very woman who appears to be Joanna of the Traveling Companion sits down and offers him a hypothetical task to do a small favor, which may have consequences for one of the passengers. But Michael will not find out about them. As a reward, he will receive $100,000, 25 of which is an advance payment is lying in the toilet of the second car. Joanna wants Michael to find the passenger with the bag containing what he stole. The passenger, under an assumed name, travels to the Call Spring Station. Joanna offers Michael a choice until the next station, then exits the train. Finding a bag of money in the restroom vent, Michael realizes that none of this is a prank. The man tries to get off at the next station, but at the exit he is intercepted by a girl and, hearing his refusal to run an errand, gives him a small package and tells him that Michael is being followed by opening the package. The agent to his horror finds his spouse's wedding ring. Michael borrows a cell phone from an acquaintance named Tony, who is traveling with him on the same train, after which he tries to call his wife. However, she does not answer. Then he leaves a voicemail for Alex Murphy. Michael takes Walt's newspaper and writes a message on it asking him to call the police. However, when Walt gets out of the car, Joanna calls Michael and tells him to look outside. Running up to the window, Michael is horrified to see the stranger push Walt into the road ahead of the traveling bus and the old man is killed instantly. Joanna threatens to kill Michael's entire family, whereupon Michael agrees to start searching for the mysterious prince and attaches a tracker to his bag, which is slipped into his jacket pocket. While the ticket secured in the seat lists, Michael manages to figure out five unfamiliar passengers traveling Sprint. Marked by a number, seven. A bearded man in a plaid shirt, a girl in a tank top, a nurse, a dark-skinned guy in a cap with a guitar case. A girl with tattoos and brightly colored hair, and a broker in an expensive suit. Another seat with a spring ticket turns out to be empty. First of all, Michael sits down to the broker as he sees him for the first time, but the arrogant guy refuses to answer the companion's questions and calls him a beggar, and Michael gives him the middle finger. The agent tries to talk to the totalitarian girl and check her suspicious bag. But after getting a spray of alcohol in the can, the man discovers that her bag contains a fake driver's license. The girl assures him that they belong to her boyfriend, and Michael promises not to tell anyone anything. A poster calling for suspicious persons to be reported tips the man off. Michael informs the conductor of the nurse's suspicious behavior. A guy with a guitar and a bearded man and asks him to check their bags. Having already sat down, on an empty seat, the agent notices a suspicious guy with a large bag and a tattoo on his neck, sitting in the same empty seat. Hearing the conflict between the conductor and the nurse, the guy rises abruptly and goes to another car. And Michael follows him. In the vestibule, the guy in an aggressive form tries to frighten the agent. As soon as Michael says the word Prince, the guy gets aggressive and lashes out at the agent. The scuffle results in both of them flying into the train car, and Michael stealthily hooks a tracker to his opponent's bag. 
After letting Michael go, the guy advises him to save himself and leaves, and the Negro with the guitar helps the man up, powerless, and Michael returns to his seat, and soon he gets a call back from Alex on Tony's phone. Michael tells his comrade about everything that happened to him, to which Alex says that he sent two police officers to his house just in case. The lieutenant adds that two days ago a certain Enrique from the Department of City Planning committed suicide by jumping out of a window. However, there is a witness, going by the name Prince, who claims that Enrique was murdered. Michael realizes that Prince is in mortal danger and tries to find the guy to warn him. However, he finds only his bag with personal belongings and a gun inside. Hearing a phone call, Michael discovers the body of a murdered guy in the hatch of a neighboring empty car in the pocket of which lies an FBI agent's ID card. Joanna calls the dead man's cell phone and tells Michael that he had the wrong man and that he alone is responsible for the death. Troublemaker The woman suggests the agent continue the search, but he balks. Demands proof that his wife and son are all right. Then he hears a recording of his family talking. Michael says that the police are Rita, who will be at their house soon. However, Joanna informs him that the police are now interested in Michael McCauley has caught their attention with his suspicious actions on the approach to the next station. Michael actually sees several cops searching the entire train. The agent hides under a rail car next to a dead body. However, to open the slot from the inside and go back the man can no longer. The train is moving and Michael barely manages to slip between its wheels. The agent from behind jumps on the foot of the train but loses the bag with money and in the hands of the man remained only a measly $100. To simplify the search, Michael disables the air conditioning in all cars except the last one and all the remaining passengers move there to question the bearded man in the plaid shirt. The agent joins a poker game with Tony, putting the remaining hundred dollars on the line, then recites Joanna's task aloud, knowing that all the other passengers can hear him, when asked by Tony if he would take the money. Michael, smiling, replies that he already has. He reveals his cards, listing five passengers unknown to him, a bearded man, to which the man gives his name as Jackson. And to make a bet, pulls out a wad of money, in which Michael notices a monthly bus pass. The agent realizes that Jackson is also a regular passenger. Michael exits the train car following the Negro in the case. The guy tells Michael that he may be the man in question. Michael offers him his help and asks him to open the case, which actually contains a guitar. Michael offers to barricade himself in the first train car and then pulls a small fire axe out of a drawer near the door. The guy pulls a gun from behind his belt and says that he's not a prince at all. Michael realizes this much earlier, though, because his guitar is for a lefty, and he holds the gun in his right hand. In a fierce fight, Michael manages first to beat the killer with his own guitar, and then throws him out of the car under the train passing along the neighboring tracks immediately after that Joanna calls and threateningly orders Michael to kill the witness himself, otherwise she will eliminate his entire family. Michael returns to the last carriage. At Harrison Station, a broker gets off with several passengers. This leaves only a nurse named Eva. The agent thinks she is the prince, threatening her with a gun. The man takes her cell phone, which is constantly being called. However, he finds there only a message from her boyfriend, with whom, according to the nurse, they had a big fight today. Michael is at a loss to find and check out the six unknown passengers. Two are dead. Three more are not witnesses, and one walked out on Harrison. Only now does the agent realize that the broker was sitting next to the girl wearing headphones and moved into her seat when she left for the other end of the car. That's why her ticket was sticking out of the back of his seat. And Michael figured he was going to code spring. At the door of the train car, Michael finds a girl wearing headphones named Sophia. Reading a novel called The Scarlet Letter. The main character whose name is Green. At this point, Joanna calls and orders Michael to kill spring, but he again refuses. An infuriated Joanna says that her bosses can kill anyone. They really need the death of a witness. When Michael tries to find out who her bosses are, Ta hangs up on him, telling Michael that he made his own choice and now all the passengers will die. Michael, threatening with a gun, orders the conductor to pull the stopcock. However, instead of braking, there's an explosion that blows up the driver's cab. The brakes don't work. The train passes spring at full throttle to the utter bewilderment of the FBI sheep waiting to witness on the platform. Conductor Sam says that the train is sure to derail at the next turn at this speed. Michael offers to unhitch the last car, and together with Sam he manages to do so. However, the chain prevents the car from unhitching completely. Michael and Sam miraculously manage to jump back on the train. The two of them break the chain with an axe. 
and when the train goes into a curve and derails, Michael is thrown into the last car, and Jackson grabs his arm. The last carriage goes off the rails, but manages to stop in time to panic. People try to get out of the carriage, but Michael holds them back by firing several times into the air. He says that nothing is over yet and it's possible the killers could be close by. People cover the windows of the car with wet newspapers and Michael questions the witness Sophia. Why would anyone want her dead? The girl says that she saw two policemen kill Enrique and even retells the words of one of them that there is no nobility. That's why she went not to the police, but to the FBI to see Agent Garcia. In the girl's bag is Enrique's hard drive with dirt on very powerful people. Local police converge on the crash site and Captain David Holder arrives by helicopter to command the operation. The police believe that the passengers are Michael's hostages. This is the information Sam gave them. Before the explosion occurs, Michael is calming down the passengers as best he can when an unarmed Alex approaches the train car door. Once inside, he tries to find out where the witness is. But Michael won't talk until his family is safe. Alex berates his former partner, saying that he wants to do the honorable thing, but there is no honorable thing. Michael has a shocked look with Sophia. The agent accuses Alex of betrayal and threatens to kill him. In response, he confesses that he himself advised to put the witness on the train. After all, the comrade really needs money. Michael has to give the gun to Alex. Otherwise, his family will be killed. Alex begins to seek shelter by threatening the passengers with the gun and a frightened Sophia rises, but Jackson rises after her and says he is rising and the other passengers, including Tony and the nurse. Each of them says he's a prince. Alex shoots Jackson. Michael knocks the gun out of his former partner's hands and a fight breaks out. The other passengers rush at Alex, but he defeats them all. Snipers outside see the cop thanks to the system his alien SWAT team is ready to storm in. Michael tries to take the gun away from Alex, but Alex shoots him in the leg and throws him aside. Michael collapses into the seat. In his hands, the lieutenant sensor is his own strangers. Alex points the gun at Sophia, about to shoot her, but falls dead himself from several sniper hits. The SWAT team begins the assault. Agent Garcia enters the train car and informs Michael that his family is safe. Captain Cold says that Alex was under internal investigation, that they will definitely find the mystery woman, and that the police force lacks the right people like Michael. As the captain steps back, Michael pulls a hard drive out of his jacket pocket. Enrique, the investigation that has begun is being widely covered by the media. Some doubt the existence of the woman who derailed the train. On the evening train from Chicago, Michael finds Jean reading the Count of Monte Cristo, but the woman pretends they do not know each other. The man sits down across from her and says that Joanna will stay on the plus side one way or another. Whatever happened on the train back then, she didn't care who she set up. And now Alex Murphy is the scapegoat. When Joanna leans forward and asks what Michael thinks will happen next, he says one little thing and shows her an NYPD detective badge. Joanna leans back in her seat again and Michael smiles at his traveling companion, implying that she's under arrest. What do you think of the movie Passenger? Share in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you all again.